name is Kate Cumbo and I'm the Director of Programs for the Peace Jam Foundation internationally. So um, I help develop all the curricular programs as well as build out all of our affiliates around the world. And right now, with the current crisis in Europe and in the Middle East, we're getting um, just a really lot of demand for Peace Jam. The purpose of this session is to introduce Peace Jam to you. Some of you I know are familiar with Peace Jam, you've been to conferences, you're using it in your schools. There's a lot of you who aren't. So it's to introduce Peace Jam. Kate's here, she'll, she'll help us, she'll talk about um, the international side of Peace Jam. We've got Fiona here, who's been with Peace Jam UK right from the start. It's also an opportunity for you to answer any, or ask any questions that you might have. Um, as the weekend progresses, there might be more questions you want to ask about Peace Jam, how it works, why we do things. Just come and talk to us. Okay? We are very open and we have nothing to hide, so we will tell you everything. We're all very evangelical about Peace Jam. And I can assure you, once you get us started, you won't shut us up. We've made the curriculum UK friendly, so it meets Ofsted requirements. Uh, we're pretty certain now it meets the prevent agenda which we'll be talking about later on over the weekend. Um, we have schools that use it throughout the curriculum from year seven all the way up to uh, upper sixth. We have a school that uses it as key stage three citizenship. Um, it's not prescriptive so some people look at it and they might pick chunks out for religious studies or PSHE or citizenship, others it's fully integrated. They don't call it Peace Jam, obviously it might be coaching, it might be citizenship, it might be something else. So that's how it can be integrated into the curriculum. The other way that it can be brought into the school in the first place, because it's very difficult, certainly you can't turn up in June and say you need this to start in September, so some schools bring it in and youth organisations bring it in as an after school club. So you just might just have a small group of committed young people who will meet every week and do the One Billion Acts of Peace project and work through the programme. And that way some schools, they see these, this group of young people being really fired up, want to know more, and then we can come in and talk about how we get it into the curriculum. And what about younger children? You talked secondary school there. What about younger children? We go children? all the way down to Key Stage 2. Key stage um, two. That doesn't mean to say younger children can't do the One Billion Acts of Peace and may well uh, because teachers are very uh, very good at making things accessible to young people but it, the Key Stage 2 one is literacy based and it's based, each lesson is based around a laureate's life and a laureate's experiences and there's enough material to do a laureate one lesson a month for the whole year or you can look, look at a laureate and you can pull it out over a number of weeks it's totally up to you, but all our curricula are based around the laureate's lives. So we're not telling young people how they, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. We're always turning it back to how would the laureates deal with it. My daughter's in year two um, and they've looked at the Dalai Lama, they've looked at Rigoberta and they've looked at Desmond Tutu because they're the ones that they felt were more relatable to the little ones. So they've adapted all the... Yeah, absolutely. So my question is... Are there any primary Peace Jam events in the US or other parts of the world and are there plans to have them in the UK? What we've started to do is um, create these Peace Jam, usually it's just one day, sometimes two, um, for the younger students and so absolutely and so we're experimenting that with, in two different regions. Next week in Chicago, we have Jody Williams coming, um, who many of you know. Um, and so she will spend the first, we, she, we're paying her extra money to spend an extra day. And she'll do a Peace Jam Slam one day event with the Littles, we call them. Um, and so these are actually elementary school and middle school students. And then she'll travel to the university and do a full two day Peace Jam. The thing I want to also be careful of is these laureates are not talking about age appropriate things for young children. Ending the use of rape in war is not a primary school um, topic. For example, when the laureate will go and talk with the younger students and they get excited and they have the laureate for about 20 minutes to show them what they're working on. In Denver, they're doing a mock human rights trial based on the story of Goldilocks. 
and the three bears. Wow. So, um, so you see what I'm saying? And so then, the, and then she'll go as the judge. So Sharina Body is a judge, um, was a judge. And so she'll go and help adjudicate the trial, right? And so she'll spend time with the students. Do you see how exciting this can be? So thank you for that question. Periodically, because Google is on board, the laureates will do Google, what called Google Hangouts. And they don't, they don't happen very often, but when they do happen, schools can be part of the Google Hangout. Okay, so that's some, sometimes ways that the younger students can get to meet a laureate or hear a laureate. The downside of that in the UK can be the time difference. Or so it might be early morning, might be after school, might be a weekend but that from time to time they are an option. What differences do you see in the attitude of the children after they've been through a peace jam? Well, there's two things that meaning being through a peace jam. So most of you are doing the year-long curriculum, right? So there are impacts that happen by doing the curriculum every week with the young people, and that's where the impacts come from, right? Um, and then they come together for this weekend, but there are some students who are brand new and just show up. They get recruited at the last minute and just have these two days. And what we evaluations show us is that 98% of the students who participate in Peace Jam conference only, 98% say that one person can make a difference and that they're willing to do their part. But by the end of this conference, you'll see a transformation. Those of you who brought students have, who have not done Peace Jam before. Um, and so what we see is this idea that change is possible, that they have a role in that change, right? And that they have allies. And there are other people who may look different and people who they may never have talked to before or considered talking to, who now become their friends and their allies. Students really begin to see is that this is a lifetime commitment that they're making to a cause that they care about. And it may be that they volunteer just an hour a week, right? Or maybe they dedicate their life to this. Um, some of the inadvertent uh, effects of the Peace Jam program are um, about 34% of students say that it positively impacted their decision to go to university. We know that especially students who come from poverty or first time, first generation college students um, who are immigrants, refugees, that they really don't usually stay in university past the first year. They have a high dropout rate. And those who participate in Peace Jam actually stay all four years because they have a vision, right? They know why they're going. They see what they're doing and how it's going to impact the world. <laughs>